five, four, three, two, one. Good evening, everybody. Uh, seven o'clock, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, we're going to open up an informal discussion tonight for zoning changes to URA, B, C, and design guidelines and layout. Uh, there was a little confusion at our last meeting uh, about uh, participation and so forth, but uh, tonight's discussion is, uh, as was last uh, meeting, it's just a discussion, an informal discussion. So jump right in if you have any comments or questions. Uh, we're not voting on anything, we're not making any decisions, we're just, we're just talking. Uh, this is a long process that we're knee deep in now. Uh, so again, if you have any comments, just raise your hand, I'll call on you, just let me know uh, your name and address, and uh, feel free to give and take. Uh, that being said, Carolyn, you want to start with this and jump in? Yeah, um, so we talked last time about, um, uh, you know, focusing more on the design standards piece, and then I also brought a sample, which I have again, um, of an ordinance um, layout that really focuses more on graphics and to explain the text. Um, and um, and I think you know we, we did talk a little bit more about um, wanting to have graphic representation of some of the design standards to make it clear um, what the goals were. And I got from, gathered from the last discussion that um, we wanted to scale back on the numbers per se, but have more of the concepts, and then flesh out some of the reasoning behind the design concepts. Uh, so I started to take a crack at that in terms of incorporating both your comments about sort of erasing the, one, uh, you know, one of them was the um, percentage of, of um, porch and, the, de and the, num the figure about the depth and just sort of have covered entries and that kind of thing. So um, I went and Luckily, we have we were able to we can mock up those graphics ourselves. We don't have to send them back to the middle to, to redo. So and we had talked to them about doing that anyway, about having something that could be uh, um, flexible through time, even. So five years hence, we want to make some tweaks on it. It wasn't frozen. We have to go back to the contract. So um, I went back and did that, and then also started to. Um, um, bring in, incorporate some more pictures and graphics based on the conversations we were having. And I actually printed out a couple of, um, unfortunately I forgot to do double sided, so I'm just going to pass these around. This is the first page of what, you know, this is a very, very crazy rough mock up of sort of starting. To, I just wanted to do it for one district to see how much energy it would take and what we could do. So it's definitely not complete, but it's just sort of that initial section about, and, and there's the page two, which I hope printed out, but maybe it's not there. It actually has the, gosh, I wonder if the printer just stopped after that. I guess it did, because there's no page two there. Is there? There's one there? Okay. But it should be able to share with them. What's that? Yeah. It's just, so then the, the bulk of it obviously is the lot size, but it's really the same, where on the left hand column you have the standard. But the idea is the right-hand column is the graphic representation of what that standard is. And um, I'm totally a novice in SketchUp, so some of these things on the right are little baby steps. But we're, we know we have a couple of good interns in the office that know SketchUp really well. So um, we're hoping that we can just sort of give this to them, and then they can take it and make it really look presentable. Um, but so that's the idea, but then sort of going back and, and um, so the idea would be to emphasize more of neighborhood characteristic and form um, because that's been an important concept that you guys have been hearing about and, and, um, and so incorporate all the funeral graphics but then add some of that to really flesh out what what it means to have build out on a lot and what it means to have build out with additional parking. And um, uh, so there's not, I mean, I I don't know how much more you want to go into discussion 
of design or the concept. I guess, you know, clearly there's some folks who are very concerned. You got the letter in November or early December probably, and then I followed it to you again last week from Ward 3 about wanting to scale back the zoning. Because, and so I think, you know, um, and, but at the same time, we've heard from people who are very interested in doing individual projects and feel like they're, um, you know, hemmed in by the current zoning that's not reflective of the existing neighborhood context. Um, and um, so it's obviously important to keep the conversation going and the momentum going. But you know, from our perspective, I think I heard from you guys last time that you'd rather get it right and have things laid out and make and have a conversation about um, all of it in the context rather than just trying to keep it going for the momentum's sake. So we're hoping, we would like to do this, you know, in a relatively short time, but at the same time, I think it's an important piece to make for us. So it's probably going to take us internally a few more weeks to really get it all together and get the interns going. <laughs> Is it the intent to have a, a graphical representation of, of each? You know, we went through the through the charts yeah. and the um, the wording for, for any change that was made. We reviewed that wording and either agreed or changed it or whatever. Is it is it the intent to have a, a graphic next to every one of those or every third one or a group yeah, together? Yeah, I think the idea. What we're thinking is have the bulk of the representation um, as it relates to lot size, layout, parking and those kinds of things that relate to the design characteristics. And then have a separate page that would just be, here are all the uses allowed by right, and then here are the uses that require special permit. Mm -hmm. And so that, no, we wouldn't have graphic representation necessarily of each one, but we just sort of simplify it and make it have, you know, the bulk of the design piece with the lot dimension standard sort of in one place, and then we have a separate list of what's allowed. So, you know, this it says this is a, and also a description of the zone. So for URD, it's primarily a residential district, but then you go to this one page that has special permit. You can do funeral homes or you know, I don't know what, whatever else there are allowed to be by special permit. Be the same for A and C, um, but and and then in C, obviously, it's primarily residential with some lots amount of mixed use. Space. Um, so, for example, the, at the first front page for each district, you have it would be standard for each one: layout, lot size, parking. Yeah. And then you turn the page, and you get into more detail. So, the more you dig in, the more detail you yeah. get. But up front, you have a quick representation of what we're talking about for each district. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a statement that indicates what the nature of that district is? Well, I think that's the goal. Yeah. Right. And so. This first yeah. page on the left, the first column was, you know, the first cut and mm -hmm. trying to get to that. This is primarily a residential district for a single family, two and three family units are allowed. And then for A would be, prim um, you know, primarily residential where single family homes are allowed. And, you know, um, not multiple. Um, and then for C, you know, allowance of some mixed use, et cetera. And is there any attempt to relate this, or do you think there's any point in any attempt to relate this to the sustainable Northampton? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, well, it's going to be within the zoning context, so I think, the, oh, I think maybe, um, you know, the other piece of it is to say, you know, be in C or neighborhoods around the core. Um, commercial areas with a little walking distance it's or something why like you're that. doing it. Right. But I think that's sort of a precursor in the ordinance package as opposed to in the zone. So maybe an explanation um, in the, the statement that goes to city council. Um, I think maybe ultimately at the beginning of the whole zoning ordinance it might be good to have that sustain the reasons for making these changes, this is what's being used in 
and it ought to be connected. It's not like you don't know now, but when someone picks it up at some further point, mm -hmm. that's that's why they are being laid out the particular way in which they're being laid out. Yeah. <coughs> These particular guidelines came out of one of the meetings that you had with the Ward Three Association and was designed in some ways to address some of the concerns that came out of those. That well, there were there was one at the parking one in particular, we already had, the, you guys had discussed the other elements, I think, going forward, you know, from the begin, from the outset, because there was a lot of, and, and that came out of the Zoning Revisions Committee process, actually, the right. other ones. Right. Um, which really did focus, actually, on, as I recall, the idea that Ward 3, which is a neighborhood that people love, could not be built today, so right. we wanted to conform the zoning to what we what liked. Existed. Right. Yeah, right. that's where, that was the sort of... Right origins of this whole process. Right. And so the one additional one that I think, you know, was, was a great addition was um, the piece about, yeah, parking does have a big impact and we need to really have a standard in there to address if you're adding units and therefore adding parking, we have to deal with that impact to a neighborhood. <coughs> Janet Gross, 38 Round Hill Road. It's my understanding from the meetings back in October that um, URA zoning would not change. Is that the case? URA zoning would not change? Mm -hmm. Well, the, um, the map, the geographic area of URA is not currently um, being discussed to adjust the boundaries. But the zone itself, the dimensional requirements, um, are part of this package to change. So they will experience some change as well as the other you Right, lot, lot size, frontage, um, primarily are the, are the things that would change in URA. Thank you for the clarification. things like the photos of the actual houses, I think is really helpful because we've had discussion, I think Devin in particular has expressed concerns that we're not too controlling about design guidelines, that we don't want to stop modern houses like the one we talked about with Woodlawn with, with with and everything. Um, so I like that. I like that it shows the, the different, you know, that we're not becoming, a, you know, a Nantucket in that way, but we're really, we're trying to control for other things, not for the actual architecture. Yeah. going to be the core at the back of yeah. the package. Yeah, yeah. They'll be in here, but in a different layout. And so the idea is really... By offering here... I hate to bring up a legal question, but you know, I'm not a lawyer. But uh, There are no lawyers. Yeah, exactly. Anymore. And those are the only people that raise good questions. But, um, <laughs> the, the idea that you're starting with something that's conceptual and more general but then gets, I mean, this is, this is very actionable. I mean, a, a building knows what they can do, and it's, it's almost rule-based. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are they, well, and where I'm going, are, are, are these going to open us up for an argument about, well, but I can meet these numbers, but I don't look like that? You know, I mean, I, I'm just wondering, are the, is the imagery going to give us any trouble? I, I actually really like it. Well, um, I know, I think I heard you all say last time in, in this example, there were, it went sort of from a flat 2D surface to then some architectural thing, and you said, stay away from that, keep it really basic. And that's the goal. This all, a thing was really trying to figure out, because um, people have problems with zero lot line, like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. So that's the only one where I built up a structure, but I could certainly do a flat roof, if <laughs> that makes the difference. Um, and that's really more to show you can have two houses right next to each other, and that's a zero lot line. And that's really rep supposed to be representational as opposed to design. Yeah. And which it was why I didn't think that we need to or you know, put any ornamentation on that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually just grappling with what, you know, what might we try to think about now. Yeah. Well, I think if we have pictures of <coughs> that are acceptable, I agree. I mean, I think 
it says, you know, example structures, and it, there's a, a, a range there. They're not all the same, um, as Jen mentioned. And then under the building design standards, it's, it's very clear. It's, it's just referencing on the left, it gives the numbers, and on the right, it's a representation of those numbers. So I don't think it, I don't it's think not it's right. <laughs> So you're just going to let the interns loose and have, you have yeah. at it for a couple of weeks? And okay. It seems to me that what we should be worrying about is not the graphical representation, which is very desirable when you have to do it. But the core is in the numbers right. and the figures here, and this is what we should be figuring out. Which is what we've been That's focusing we've been on. Doing. And, and now we're just, focusing. as long as the graphics accurately represent what we've been nursing along for 18 months, then... Um, Since I came in in yeah, the middle of all this. No, I felt like you all were pretty comfortable with where we were after going back through, mm -hmm. um, through those. So numbers. you think you're through with this step and right. that's, so now it's the, and then having gotten those together, you may look at it and right. want to make Right, so shift. I plan that you guys will, will certainly want to look at it again before it gets formally introduced. had the, the, the chart and that's generated discussion along the way but collectively we felt pretty good with where that was knowing that's not done there's more discussion to be had we felt pretty good now we're we kind of putting that off the side and doing the graphical representation trying to marry those two together then we'll bring it back out again as a complete package yeah. and have that discussion one last time modify change whatever <coughs> and then try to move it forward Um, I think there was also just to make sure that um, folks are satisfied that we've covered. I think there was some, a comment or a concern that there had been um, at least people weren't sure that the board had talked or seen the memo from Ward Three. So, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I, I thought actually based on our last conversation today that there would be more than three folks here who wanted right. to speak to this, and I feel like we actually did this to allow for that because right. of the, you know, the, the follow-up today. But, you know, um, <coughs> Any other questions? Yeah. I, you know, I'd like to speak to that, that within the, the agenda. You gotta come on. Come on. Okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, Jim Nash, 18 Montview, um, that, that we, we're, we're doing um, some back and forth around when the public are encouraged to speak and when they're not. The agenda tonight did represent that a discussion was going to occur, but public comment was not part of the agenda. I, I hear, you know, I hear that it's, you know, it's, we're opening it up now, and I'm confused about how this committee works, that, um, that there's times where uh, what you guys are deliberating and that what gets said here needs to be controlled. And, then, and, and I, I respect that. Um, and so when the agenda doesn't reflect when the public can speak, the public is confused as to how they interact. So, well, the, the planning board's not like city council where there's public comment. If when there's a hearing, say for eight thirty on a particular subject, we don't have public comment at seven o'clock when the meeting opens for a hearing that we haven't heard yet, because that might influence the discussion, and somebody might come up at seven o'clock, say their piece, and then leave, and not be part of the discussion an hour and a half later. So there's 
give and take during when the hearing comes up, and we'll take public input then. But when there's a hearing, we don't take public comment at the beginning. Tonight and, and last uh, meeting was just an open discussion. It's not a hearing. It's just a tonight. It's just a discussion back and forth, and it's the public can jump in at any time. So there was some confusion last week about waiting for a public comment period that was never going to be there um, because it was just an open discussion. It was there by default. So we apologize for that. You know, and exception. But by the way, I, I the you know, last week. I, you know, I didn't feel good about it either, you know, and that, and, and that, um, you know, that it, it, it's, I get confused. I am confused about how to interact. I've been on other committees, and there's public comment at the beginning of the meeting, and that often people can be involved throughout the meeting, but with your status, because of the quasi-judicial matters that you deal with, how we interact really needs to be a lot clearer, and that um, so you know. Therefore, if you know having it, there's going to be a discussion, and then public comment is going to be sought. You know, to have that on you know the agenda would be great because then I send out an email to people saying the planning board wants to hear what you have to say. You know, and so I just say though, I mean, it's not officially stated in the agenda, but there has never been, and I've been on the board now for too many years to even remember, there's never been an occasion that the public has not been able to speak as long as there's not a legal reason why they can't, ever. So even if it's not stated on the agenda that there will be, that we're inviting the public to speak, the public is always invited to speak. And even last week, even with all the confusion, the public spoke, um, and, and, and Mark called upon the public, so that's, it has never Yeah, but I, I think if, there, there, if we can just be more formal about it, we can avoid all of the discomfort. I mean, I was so uncomfortable last week, I was like, what do I, what do, I do? And, and I, you know, after, after speaking, you know, I left here and I was like, oh God, they're all going to be upset. <laughs> and I, I, and I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think any of us wanted that to happen. So um, I, I'm just saying, if we can just be more formal about here's the, the agenda, a discussion will occur, and public input will be sought, then people will know, I want to go to that meeting, and I'm, people are going to listen to what I say. I have sat in, I, there were meetings with the ZRC where, um, where you know, we just said, you know what, we're not going to listen, we don't want the public involved in our discussion tonight because we're doing work. So that's what I felt you guys were doing with this internal discussion right here. But the public was here to witness it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why I was here tonight. So okay. I'm sorry if I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, so. I mean, maybe we can be clear on, on, on when we set up the agenda. <clears throat> Nothing was intended. Uh, I know. I, I, I get it. I, you know, I, I like all of you. That's all right? <laughs> okay. So thank, thank you. you. Anybody else have issues about uh, or comments about the issues that we're talking about right now? No? Yeah. I guess I would really have any prepared. I'm, uh, Alex Giesland, 164 Riverside Drive, long term member of the uh, Bay State Village Association. And we've been very involved in sustainable Northampton. Uh, in the spring of 2010, we did extensive um, outreach. We did a visioning for the future of Bay State. We distributed about 400 uh, questionnaires, fairly extensive, uh, asking people what they liked about the neighborhood, uh, what they saw in the future, what changes they'd like to make. And uh, we got about mm, 75 uh, responses, which I thought was really good um, representation of the neighborhood. For those of you who may be not familiar with Bay State, it's the area in the crook of the Mill River runs Riverside Drive from the high school to uh, old Pro Bush buildings and all those little roads off there. It's very, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty uh, congruent land area. And um, in general, I'd, I'd urge you, if you haven't, take a look at the um, results of that. It's on our website. Um, the, uh, Briefly, there was uh, 
there was quite a bit of, of uh, support for um, home businesses, home occupations. There was support for uh, commercial, mixed use. Uh, there was some, uh, there was support for uh, being able to expand existing buildings to and perhaps three families that didn't necessarily meet the um, current conventional requirements. But there was very little support for uh, any significant reduction uh, in, the, in the dimensional requirements. Um, that being said, we were well represented on the Zoning Revisions Commission. Peter McLean, longtime president of the Bay State uh, Village Association, along with uh, Jim, were members of that. And the compromises that they worked out, I, uh, I'm pretty much willing, I think people are willing to go along with. We also had, uh, for information, we had a forum on zoning that Carolyn did a great presentation at the Little Theater a couple of weeks ago, about 30 people. Again, there was some, uh, it was you know, it's very hard to, uh, to get a, a, a good, uh, to, to sp I, I'm not going to speak for what the, that group of people said. Again, I didn't hear uh, a great deal of, uh, of support for significant uh, infill into the neighborhood. It's uh, almost all of the houses down there have been built uh, probably before 1970, many of them uh, built in the, in the late 1800s. Um, nevertheless, the compromise that they worked out, the 60-foot frontage, is something I'm, like the Ward 3 Association, I think it's something that, you know, understand that zoning isn't freeze things, that they can never really uh, freeze the present forever. Um, but the uh, planning board's recommendation that it go to 50 feet seems to me arbitrary. Uh, as the planning department thinks 60 feet is arbitrary, but 60 feet uh, was, a, was something that a group of, of people worked out over however long that one, 18 months, <coughs> two years for the Zoning Revisions Committee, about whatever.